So up the front here we've got your hitch and your A-frame. So when you're connecting the van to your vehicle, you'll reverse up. You can use your jockey wheel to raise and lower the hitch so you can get it to the right height. You'll have to have this handle up like so. And when you lower it onto your tow wheel, this black handle will lock down. And this wee button at the front here will pop up and you'll get a green ring around that so you know that it's locked onto your tow ball correctly. You can then push this secondary lever down. There's some Alco brake pads in here that will squeeze onto your tow ball and hold it in place. You've got your breakaway cable. So this is designed to loop around the base of your tow ball and sit underneath like that. So this is for if for some reason this hitch ever gave way. This will pull and it'll break off and it'll put your handbrake on so it'll stop the van rolling past you down the street. You do have a seven pin trailer plug on here. Now your van is equipped with ATC, so or active trailer control. So in this cord here there are extra wires so you can have this plug changed into a 12 pin trailer plug. You will need an auto electrician to do that and they also have to rewire your towing vehicle. But this is designed so that if the van ever starts to fishtail, the ATC will sense it and it'll break each wheel individually to bring the van back into line with your vehicle. You've got your handbrake, just like a car, push down for off, pull up for on. Once you've got your hitch assembly all hooked up, you'll need to get your jockey wheel out of the way. So you'll wind it up so that these arms slot into these grooves, so you'll wind that up into there. You'll then undo this handle and pull the whole jockey wheel unit inside of your A-frame and tighten it up so that keeps it nice and high and out of the way. When you get to your destination and you go to unhitch your van, you'll do that in reverse. So undo this handle, drop the jockey wheel down and tighten it back up. Put your handbrake on, lift your secondary lever. You then have to lift and hold this first lever while you wind the jockey wheel up and wind this off your vehicle. If you don't hold this handle up, it won't release your tow ball and it'll just pull your vehicle up. When it stays in that upright position, you know it's off the tow ball correctly. In behind your A-frame here is your front locker. So you've got space in here for two nine kilo gas bottles. Now it's just a standard barbecue spin-on connection there. If for some reason you ever want to shut the gas off entirely at the source, you can just spin this with a yellow lever so it's in the downward facing position. But just make sure to open that line back up when you want to use the gas again. You've got your mains power cord in here for when you are plugging into a campground. You've got your leg winder, so this winds the legs up and down and there's one on each corner of the van. You've also got a wheel nut as well, so you can change your tyres. Now you will notice with this front locker is there is a bit of a grate so it is open to the elements so don't store anything in here that you don't want getting sort of dusty or damp also these front lockers have a payload of about 20 to 23 kilos so you don't want to overload this as it will affect the towing of the van so up on the front corner here this is the vent for when you're running your water heater on gas so when you're using the water heater on gas you'll get some warm to hot air out of here but that's completely normal in behind that here is your water housing for your fresh water. So you've got your fresh water barrel here, so you fill that up and then undo this cap on the top. You want to drop your pump pickup all the way down to the bottom. Sometimes with these pumps, as you can see, they curl up a little bit, so it is a good idea to get some sort of weight on the bottom just so that holds that right at the bottom. You do have a wee cap there to keep leaves and bits and pieces out. Then you hold this wee trigger back and wiggle your pump into there. As it's plastic on plastic, you do have to give it a little wriggle. So once you've got that all set up and your fresh water barrel is full of water, you can then go inside and turn your water pump on. It's a good idea to not let the fresh water barrel get below sort of quarter of the way empty, um, just because if your pump does curl up out of the water, it will run dry. Now there is no gauge inside the van to let you know how empty this is getting so you do need to keep an eye on it. When you go to remove your water pump hold that trigger down again and just wiggle it out. So just in the locker behind, right next to your water housing here this is where your deep cycle battery is held. 
Um, you don't really have to worry about that, especially since you've got solar hooked up, but that's just where it is if you do even need to get to it. On the right hand side here, this is where your mains power connects to. So you'll need to hold your cat back. There is a groove on here which corresponds to the one on the van, so it does only go on the one way. You can then pop that on. And then there is a groove in the locker and the door, so you can put your cord in there and close it up. Uh, it keeps the weather out and it stops anyone being able to get to your battery as well. Now just in behind here, this wee red key is the isolator switch for your motor mover. So when you're going to use your motor mover, you'll pop that in here, push it in and rotate it until you feel it click. You're then going to come to your motor mover. So this here is your motor mover remote. So push and hold the wee on button and it'll flash up and then flash back down. Now when you want to engage this onto your wheels, you're going to press and hold the button in the middle with the, the wheel on it. So you're going to press and hold that and then press the arrow that's pointing towards the top of the remote. Now you press it and you release them. The lights at the top will start to flash and count down from four to one. You'll then hear the motor mover start to move and it'll start to engage itself onto the wheel. Now it'll do this on both sides at the same time so you don't have to worry about going back around and doing it again. It is a wee bit hard to see but there is a wee yellow indicator that starts to appear in this wee window so you know that your motor mover has locked on correctly when that appears. Once you've got that locked on you can then go and take your handbrake off. You can then move the van, this is actually the front of the van here. So you can move it forward, reverse, and then left and right and forward and reverse. Once you've got the van where you want it, go and pop your handbrake on. To disengage the motor mover, you need to press and hold this middle button again. And then you press the button that's facing towards this point of the van and release. And again, the lights will start to count down and then it'll begin to disengage itself. When you are using the motor mover, the lights along the top here are your speed. So the, towards the right hand side is faster and to the left is a slower speed for the motor mover. Now if you get somewhere and for some reason your motor mover won't disengage, um, either because your battery is flat or the, remote, the battery in the remote is flat, what you need to do is take this cover off and there'll be a wee bung here and you use this handle and you have to rotate it about 30 times and that'll wind it off and disengage it. As you can see there, the motor mover releases itself back and then you may have seen it, it does push itself forward a little bit, that's just to lock itself into place. Once you've got that all set up, you can then just turn your remote off and then do make sure that you turn the isolator switch off because if you leave it running, it will drain your battery. Now these wee covers here um, just sit in your drawer at the front. These are designed to cover up your fridge vents. So especially if you're going somewhere where it's quite gravelly or dusty, make sure you pop these on and it just stops anything clogging up your fridge. Just behind your wheel here is your grey water outlet. So when you're going to connect up your kitty, undo the cap on the cam lock. You've then got your grey water hose here. So you just push that on and then pull these levers round. Just like so. They are new so they can be a wee bit stiff. Once you've got that set up, um, you need to pop your breather in at the bottom. Once you've got that all set up, make sure you've got all your valves open. So you've got that in the open position. The one at the top of your caddy and also underneath the van here. Uh, there is a gauge at the top here so you can keep an eye on your grey water levels. When you go to empty it, it's a good idea to turn this ball valve off underneath your van just so there's no residual grey water in the system that comes out onto the ground. Close these valves off, remove your breather and disconnect your hose. You can then wheel that away to, to your dump station to empty it. Now underneath this lid here you do have a bungee cord, so you can use that to strap the caddy to your chassis or around the wheel just to stop it rolling around in the wind. Or you can pop your toilet cassette on the top here 
and strap it in if you need to empty both at the same time. You do also have a cap and spout, so you can pop that in, screw that onto the bottom and that gives you a nice direct pull when you go to empty it. On the rear of the van here, up the top, this is where you put the fresh water for your toilet flush. So depending on the model, it generally takes about 8 to 10 litres, but it is more of a visual reference. So once you get water in this trough, you know that it's nice and full. Now there is a pink toilet chemical that goes in there. Now this helps with smell, but it also helps lubricate all the seals in your pump inside of there. Now underneath that here, we've got your toilet cassette. So lift up this orange lever at the bottom and slide it out. Now the things in this circle here are operated inside the van so you don't need to worry about that. When you go to empty this, turn your spout out. If you're having trouble getting this cap off, you do have an air release valve at the bottom here that you can press and then your cap should come off nice and easy so you can empty that out. Uh, your cap does have some measure measurements on it. Um, so that is designed to measure out the blue toilet chemical so you measure that out and pop that in your cassette again helps with smell but this helps break down everything in the cassette so it's nice and easy to empty your toilet cassette does have wheels on it so you can lift this orange handle up over the gray tabs so you can wheel it to your dump station and back when you go to pop the cassette back in your van just make sure that you clip that handle back behind those gray tabs you can then slide that in and just make sure it clicks back into place. Now the only other thing in this locker is just up the top here on this wee shelf is this bung. So this is so that you can pull this bung off and it drains all the water out of your toilet flush tank. It's really important to do that when you're storing the van, um, especially over winter. It just stops your pump staying submerged in water for too long and seizing and helps prevent frost damage as well. So right up on the front corner on the door side of your van here, this is a gas outlet for if you're wanting to run a barbecue off the gas bottles in your front locker. You do need to get an adapter to slot into here and then it, the hose running from the van to your barbecue cannot have a regulator on it because the gas bottles are already regulated inside that front locker so if you double regulate it it won't work. So just inside above your door here this is sort of your main control panel for your 12 volts so you've got the power button in the middle so you can liven everything up. Now the wee lightning bolt with the light means that we've got the 240 volt plugged in and then the light inside the caravan means that you've got your 12 volt on. You can with that 12 pin trailer plug have it wired up so you can see that your car power is available and also you can check the battery in your vehicle. Uh, on the left hand side here is your deep cycle battery in the van so you can get a good gauge on what sort of level that's sitting at. And then just below here is to turn your water pump on and off so you want to make sure that your water pump's plugged in and your fresh water barrel is all full. You can come in, turn that on and that'll start to run your water pump. It's really important that you turn it back off uh, when you're filling your fresh water barrel up so it doesn't run dry. You will find if you haven't used the van for a while you'll have to open up your taps just to get some of that residual air out but then your water pump will pressurize and you'll be all good to go. Just to the right of that main control panel here is the panel to operate your LD room and water heater system. So you just hold that button down to turn it on. Now this is just sort of like a main home screen. Um, so you can see that the room temperature is currently 16.5 degrees and we've got mains power connected. So if you hit your menu button here, so at the top you can set your room heated temperature so it goes up in 0.5 degree incre increments um, anywhere from 18 to 30 degrees there. Underneath that here is for your water heater so it always sits at a standard for warm water of about 50 degrees so it'll do that straight away and we'll just sit there in the background. You do if you press the plus button you can boost it up so for 30 minutes it will heat your water to, to about 65 degrees. Um, after that half hour is up it'll drop back down to its regular setting of 50 degrees. Underneath that is your modes. Uh, so you've got mains power so you've got one kilowatt and two kilowatts. 
There is a three kilowatt option, but you will really struggle to find a campground or somewhere that will support that much power drawer. So you'll need to use it in either one or two kilowatts. Underneath that here, you've got gas. So you can turn your gas on and then turn it off on the side here. There is also the option that you can have your gas and your mains power on at the same time. Um, so the system will flick between the two for your room and your water heater. So if you're using the oven, it'll be more efficient for it to run your room heater on 240 volt. And then it'll flick back and forth to what's most efficient to run it on. And then you can just hit the menu button again and you'll get sort of that home screen. And then you just press and hold the power button to turn your Audi system off. So under your front seat on the off side, so your fridge side of the van, um, right up underneath here is your Audi water heater. Now that'll do its own thing based on the controls you select from that panel. But one thing you do need to know about it is this little yellow lever down the bottom here. So just like your toilet, when you're storing the van, especially over winter, come in, flick that up, and that'll drain all the water out of your water heater. Um, it'll drain it out the bottom of the van. You can just leave that in the up position, but do make sure when you come back to use the van again that you do flip it back down. Um, nothing drastic will happen. It's just that when you go and turn your water pump on, all the water will drain straight out the bottom of your van. Just next to that here, we have got your secondary battery. So that's all safe and secure in there. And this here is just your motor mover unit. Now underneath that here, we have your 12 volt fuses on the left hand side and your main RCDs on the right hand side so if you ever have any trouble with your 240 volt or 12 volt just come and check these out also something to be aware of up the top here so you've got your battery charger on you don't ever really need to turn that off to be fair that is just so that when you are plugged into mains power it is keeping your battery charged if you don't think that your Audi is heating your water or your room properly um, come and check that this isolator switch is on because if that isn't lit up then your Audi won't work so just make sure you've got your isolator switch on there just in the left hand side cupboard next to your microwave here um, this is your controller for your solar panel so the flashing red symbol underneath your panel means that your panel is all connected and then you've got that your two batteries are connected as well on the left hand side here on your meter so you've got the panel you can see that it is feeding the battery so the wee sun in the corner means that it's all connected and charging the battery you will get a moon in this corner sometimes as well that means the system is still all connected and good to go it, there's just not enough light for it to actively be charging the battery if you hit the select button here so you can get how many volts are coming off the battery some amp hours, your battery is at 100% charge, the voltage of your battery, some wattage as well, uh, your controller is currently at 22 degrees, and the last screen here, E0, means that there's no faults. If you think there's an issue with your solar, do check this screen, there's E1 to 6, um, and there's a wee booklet that explains each one as well, and then you can just hit select again, and it'll take you back to that main screen. Here we have the controls for your fridge. So press and hold this button and that'll power up your fridge. Cool. So on the left hand side here we've got your modes. So currently mains power is selected. As long as you've got your mains power cord plugged in, the fridge will start to cool down. In the middle here we've got gas. Um, you will hear the fridge start to tick. That's it trying to ignite. Um, if this warning button comes up red and starts to flash, that means that your fridge has failed to ignite on gas. So what you need to do is turn your fridge off, go and check your gas bottles, check they're turned on. You can then come back in, turn your fridge on and you should be good to go. And then at the end here, we have got your battery. As you can see, it's not connected because that warning button is flashing quite a bit. So this battery one is designed for when you have that 12 pin trailer plug and what it does is it maintains the temperature of the fridge as you tow. So these fridges because of the amount of power they draw are not designed to run directly off 
battery or solar so you have that 12 pin plug wired up the night before you go away you cool your fridge down on either 240 volt or gas then once you connect the caravan up to your vehicle you can switch battery on and it'll maintain the temperature that your fridge currently is um, it's a good idea for long journeys um, but it is something extra you can get done if you like and then you've just got the wee thermostat on the right hand side here just for how cold you want your fridge to be and then to turn it off just press and hold that button on the left so with your oven top here you just pop that glass back as far as it'll go um, you've got one 240 volt element just like a house oven you can just select whichever temperature you like and that'll start to heat up now the other three are gas so much like a barbecue you need to push and hold that turn it to the highest flame setting and then hit your igniter once that's ignited you can then adjust your temperature from there and then just back to the top for off so that's for those three now it is really important when you finish using the cooked cooktop that you make sure all the wires and elements are cool to the touch um, because it has been known in the past that if you do put this glass down when things are still hot um, it will shatter underneath here for your grill so just the same as the elements push turn and hold hit that igniter and then adjust your temperature from there now your grill will ignite along both sides of that barrel down the middle your oven is this one right at the end again push turn and hold hit your igniter adjust the temperature and your oven will ignite along that silver rail at the back there this here is the inside of your toilet so the bowl does swivel so you can pop it out of the way when you're using the vanity in the shower and then you can move it around to fit your legs in up the top here is your flush so you press that button and that will flush into the toilet there is a wee light indicator on the top here to let you know when your toilet cassette is getting full and you need to empty it so you use the toilet flush everything away and then you've got a handle at the bottom here so with this wee lever you push it towards the wall and that opens up your toilet cassette uh, so you flush everything away and then it's really important that you do close your toilet cassette back up so make sure that this handle is facing more towards the door um, this is important because obviously it seals and it stops smells but also your toilet cassette will not remove from the locker if the toilet is open on the inside so if you go to remove your toilet cassette and you find that it's resisting quite a bit hop back in the van and just make sure that the toilet is in the closed position and then it should pull out with no problems